guys, this is the this is red maple, Acer rubrum, sap and Daisy. Right, it has that typical kind of Canadian maple leaf sort of thing. And look at its distribution. It has a huge distribution. So this distribution, of course, is um, that's probably what you could imagine its distribution was in 1491. Now it's all a lot of it's been cut down. It's all messed up, but it used to be that this plant was the one of the dominant plants in this huge hardwood forest that stretched from Nova Scotia all the way to Louisiana of just hardwood forest. You know, they say a squirrel could jump, could could travel from Virginia all the way to Oklahoma by jumping on trees. That's how dense it was? That's, That's how, how dense thing. it was. Um, wow. So, red maple, <laughs> Acer, people, Acer <laughs> rubrum, yeah. sap and daisy. This is the American elm. We're not going to see very many of these, but I have that up so you can sort of see that it's got a slightly bigger distribution, but you can see it goes all the way down to, this is where, this is where we're going to be. Right below that lake there, that's where the Mississippi runs and that's where English Turn is. So this American elm had a distribution all the way from wherever this is, Canada, all the way to the, almost the tip of Florida and all the way to Nova Scotia. Huge distribution. And it's fairly continuous, except for this, it's got a little disjunct blob there. Um, yes? I'm curious, do you have a, uh, I guess a map showing where they are now, or what the distribution range is now? This is that, is is that map. Just imagine this, but where it's all mothy. It's Swiss cheesed. Okay. <laughs> so, so the distribution hasn't changed as it like narrowed in somewhere? Okay. Well, that's, this, is, this is based on herbarium specimens that are maybe as old as 200 years old. Okay. okay. It might have changed a little bit. I was curious. Yeah, its, it's it, extent might have changed, but it's just, imagine that mocking. So this American elm, Ulmus Americana, Ulmacy. This is a rare thing. We're not going to see this very much. But this one we're going to see a lot of. Box elder, Acer Nagundo, Sapindaceae. And again, you can see this incredible huge distribution, but also it's kind of got these weird disjunct distributions. All the way down in, all the way down in Guatemala, there's a patch. And there's this big, big thing along this, this mountain range in, in, in Mexico, and we even have a bunch of it. What? Right over here, the little patches of it around here, and then this big patch in the kind of central valley off of San Francisco, Northern California. And then it's all over, sort of scattered around the Rockies. And it, I can't, and we're just on the edge of its distribution here. Acer Nagundo, box elder. Excuse me? What were the Samaras? Samaras are these, are those, those uh, wing-like fruits. Helicopter fruits. twos. Um, is it the climate, or why is it dis distributed like that? Or it's just does? Okay. Yes, it's partly the climate. Okay. But um, you know, it might have had a, you know, things have been changing a lot in the last twenty thousand years. Right. So things have been getting a lot drier and hotter. Okay. And so the distributions have contracted and changed. Some of these may be just the the wettest areas where you can have So can we say like the west during the United States is like an image of what could happen to the eastern if like Yeah. Okay. I think that's true. Okay. Yeah. I was that could happen in the Appalachians, for instance. You could have right. pockets of if things got even drier, you could have pockets of suitable habitat that would make it look sort of like its distribution in the lower Rockies. There's two, we've been debating about these ashes <laughs> for many years. And there's two, there's green ash, 
which is Fraximus Pennsylvania, Pennsylvanica. It's in the Oleaceae, which is the olive family. Um, and there's another ash called pumpkin. Called pumpkin. <laughs> pumpkin ash. And it's got a really much more restricted distribution. Here's green ash, and here's pumpkin ash. Totally different. <laughs> uh, why, but, what is the debate? Can we actually well, they, consistently trying to, identify it? Trying to figure them out is, is hard based on their leaves. And we don't often see their reproductive structures because we're not there when they've got flowers on. So, or Samaras. So we know both species exist there, but whether we can consistently distinguish one from the other is not, we, we can't necessarily do that. So we call them all ash. And we check out this leaf. How would you describe that leaf? It's a compound leaf, right? It's a pinnately compound leaf. This whole thing is the leaf, and these are leaflets. And this is called odd pinnate because there's one at the end. Pinnately compound leaf. And these are big, 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 big trees. Very, very, very tall. I mean, how, how, could they be 40 meters? Uh, could be. Well, Almost. probably not, but some could. <laughs> probably more like 25, 30. So we're just going to call these, when you see something like this, it's an ash. Fraxinus is the genus, and the family is the olive family, Oleaceae. Here we are with a uh, bald cypress. Its distribution is, it's not, it's obviously, it's not very good. It's, it's a southern tree. It doesn't like frost. And so it's restricted to the eastern seaboard, Florida, and uh, the Gulf states. But it's a beautiful, beautiful, majestic tree. Um, what's the family? Cupressaceae, like Cooper. Taxodium disticum. And you can find them planted in Los Angeles as a street tree, believe it or not. A lot of these are planted in Los Angeles as street trees. Here's water oak. You can see the leaves look like kind of like a duck foot. And, uh, but remember, it's a black duck, Quercus nigra. And the family is the Phagaceae. Here's the other oak, Nettles oak, Quercus texana. And it's got a distribution, which is, it's funny that they would call it texana because it only exists in a tiny little patch in Texas. Um, in fact, water oak is much more of a Texas oak than Quercus texana. And um, Quercus nigra is not black. It's just very bad, bad naming. Bad naming. Here's another important plant that's a very common tr uh, street tree or in my, shrub. In my front yard. It, it's in Sean's front yard. It's in my front yard. It's everywhere in Los Angeles. It's Chinese privet. This is an invasive. This is an invasive. They're one of the, the, the plants that we're trying to control. Um, Ligustrum sinensis. There are two of them. There's glossy privet and there's another privet, uh, Chinese privet. Uh, but we're just going to call them privet. It's ligustrum. Can you guys say ligustrum on three? One, two, three. Ligustrum. Ligustrum sinens sinens. It's also in the Oleaceae. Isn't that weird? That this ligustrum is an invasive in the Oleaceae and Fraxinus is a native, also in the Oleaceae, but very different plants. Um, so this is more like a shrub. And we'll show you when we get there. Very glossy, um, kind of what I'd call like a normal leaf. And this is where another one of these invasions. Boo! Tallow. Chinese we should say boo. 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 Boo, tallow. Boo. Triatica sebifera, Triatica sebifera, in the Euphorbiaceae, very bad guy. And this is another invader that you're going to see quite a bit of, maybe. It's called chinaberry. 
Everything, all these invaders appear to come from China. <laughs> Why don't any of them come from, uh, like, Germany? Uh, from China. <laughs> no comment. Mal Malia Zadarak. Think of Burt Bacharach. <laughs> it's got this very pinnately compound leaf again. Um, but it's compound twice. You're not going to believe this, guys. Get out. What you're looking at is one leaf. What? It's compound twice. What? It's compound this way, and then it's compound this way. What? Oddly compound. Yes. Odd, odd pinnate. Like Good get. So it's doubly pinnate. <laughs> doubly compound. Excuse me. What determines it to be like one whole leaf? One whole leaf. Well, uh, there's a little bit of a structure on the bottom of the node where the leaf hits the stem mm -hmm. uh, that identifies it as a leaf. These leaflets don't have any of those things. That's how you can tell it's a leaflet. Or you can just take my word for it. And when, you look, <laughs> see? when you look at it, you'll see. When you got it in your hand. But it's some that's kind of naturalized. <laughs> Like, does that mean it's a, that's where it's invasive at? Yeah, you know, there's a d different categories of kind of invasiveness. Like, a lot of the plants that we get, we plant in our garden and just stay in our garden. They don't produce seed, and they just stay in our garden. But then there are some plants that produce seed, and then they pop over the fence, and they land outside in natural habitat. But in the net, and they establish there, and they grow, and they, they produce seed or whatever, but the seed isn't viable and their populations don't grow. And then there's the bad ones. Those are the ones that escape the garden, they grow into natural areas, they produce seed, and that seed is viable. And that makes a, another plant, and another plant, and another plant, and the populations become naturalized. Believe it or not, guys, I think this is hard to believe, but I think about 35% of the flora of California and keep in mind that California has more species than any other state in the Union. And 35% and of the flora of California is non-native. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we are. What, can anyone tell me what plant this is? Red maple. Man. Red maple. What's the uh, genus? No, that's the family. Family is Sapindaceae. Acer, Acer. 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 Acer.